really a pleasure to see all of these familiar faces. Hey, thank you for being here today. When I went to the Concepts Humor Department today, I found a short story because my talk's going to be a little long and we have, uh, don't have an extended period of time. So I picked one that's kind of short. We're in a very plush Austin, Texas theater. And down walking down the, the aisle is the usher. And he looks over and he sees this man sprawled all over a couple of, of the seats. And he looks and he goes over and as soon as he touches him, he smells the alcohol and he goes, sir, you're gonna have to sit up. You, you can only have one chair. And the guy just kind of went, uh, and he says, sir, you're gonna have to sit up or I'll have to go get the manager. Uh, so off he went, comes back with the manager. The manager goes through the same thing. Please, you're gonna have to sit up, what not, or I'm gonna have to get the police. Nothing happens, but uh, so what happens then? He, the manager goes out and comes back with a Texas Ranger. All right, so the Texas Ranger takes a look, the guy kind of sizes it up and smiles and says, well, partner, he says, uh, what's your name? And with a lot of pain, he gasped out, Sam. And he goes, well, Sam, he says, uh, where'd you all come from? With a little more pain, he looked up and said, the balcony. <laughs> Short trip. <laughs> okay. Today, what I was going to talk on, and literally just talk on, kind of share some ideas. Just kind of get into the energy of, of what's going on around us. And the important thing that's happening to me and most people on the planet and especially the people like yourselves that are here working to spiritually grow and become more in tune with who and what you truly are. And that's your belief systems. Uh, as much as it, it makes sense, the, the beliefs that you have are the foundation that you really come from. It's, it's, it's not necessarily who you are, but it's who you think you are because you get caught up in the belief itself. And what spiritual organizations slash churches and other places have found out that if you really want to control someone, all you really have to do is manipulate their beliefs. Pretty soon you got them dancing any way you want. So what I'd like to do is go back a little bit, take a look at the picture and how we got where we're at, then pick it up and move into the now. Interestingly enough, man, and uh, the people, as much as they struggle and they want to look back and they call primitive man or man that from a long time ago didn't seem to have the understanding that they have today. But as much as it sounds uh, unfamiliar to a lot of people, they look back and clear back into Eolithic periods. That's just before the Paleolithic period. We're, we're talking early cavemen and they found them buried in graves sometimes together. They found them with tools and weapons, and the togetherness showed a unity, and the tools and weapons showed a promise of something to come later on. They needed something to take with them into an afterlife. Man's connection to his spirituality has been there all along. It's just been looked at in different ways. They moved it forward and came through, and even what they consider primitive cultures today. Way past the caveman, but let's look at the Mayans. Let's look at the Egyptians and the pyramids and, and some of the other stuff. When you look at some of the incredible structures, thousands of years old, that have engineering feats in them that are just phenomenal. And almost all of them are tied so incredibly to the calendar, to the movement of celestial objects that their understanding of astronomy and engineering was phenomenal. They've done things that we don't even know how they did it or we couldn't do today. They want to go out and build a pyramid today, it'd have to be out of prefab, trust me. <laughs> 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 it, 
it wouldn't get it. So what also as we're working through this, religion became very well established. It used to be looked at as basically philosophy. The philosophers of the world, whether they were in China or here or, or Aristotle or Socrates or whoever, were looked at as, as a philosophical way of life. That's how they looked at the world and, and their connection to God. And then along came organized religion and they got into the mix. Interestingly enough, since most of the people here in this area are Christian, we're going to focus on that for a little bit. Now, there, even though three of the masters that people know of readily, Buddha and Christ and, and Muhammad, people that taught and brought ideas to the table, to people to guide them so that they have rules and regulations somewhat to live by, but at the same point in time had an idea of where they were going and how to get there. They gave you a process to do it. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Pointed straight at the door. Okay. What happened along the way is, is people and, and man as they do, remember that old saying? I love humanity. It's just the people I can't stand. <laughs> Think about it. What they did is they took access to God and turned it into a organized religion. And then it started to get caught up with people. Politics, power control, all the stuff that goes along with it. And we're talking way back here, 2,000 years ago. You know how this group got here? politics and whatever and whatever, because they were someplace else before. Do you understand what I'm saying when I look at it that way? Yes. But if you go back to, to where it was at, what they learned was is that man really wanted to connect to God. They wanted a way to get at him, and most people couldn't read, write, hadn't been 50 miles from home. So what did they do? They put them in this little box of ideas and then start to control it with, oh, here's how this, here's this, here's this, here's this, and that's what you do. Rights and wrongs and ups and downs and ins and outs. And the funny thing is, is most of them had things to do with stuff that Christ never even mentioned. I didn't hear a word in his gospel about the Crusades. The Inquisition. Hey, think about that. We could you know, go out there and slaughter a few million people and your name and call it the work of God. But it was. And so what happened in the midst of it is, is spirituality got lost in the shuffle. It's not that it didn't function, it didn't work, it got you from here to there. I mean, the rules and regulations are, you can live by and they'll work. I have no problem with that. The problem is, is that it was ruling through ignorance and fear, guilt and control. And it was making someone or pushing someone to do something. And the big turnaround today is, is all about figuring out who and what you are and doing it because you want to do it, because it's part of you, because it's where you need to be, not because someone's got a gun to your head or a sword over you and saying you got to do it because. Big shift in energy, huge. Because one, you're moving towards something, the other, you're being forced into it. And it's all caught up in the belief systems again. We've all been, you know, put in this little box. You get into things like, well, some of the beliefs. So, uh, I look back and, and when I was growing up, they were actually teaching this as fact. Noah and the Ark. But if you kind of look at the story this way, the whole world flooded. Okay, well Noah's got to be in the last 10,000 years because the world's only been around according to the Bible for 8,000, so it had to be in recent times. One, two, he took two of every animal on the planet and managed to gather them all up in a relatively short period of time. Do you realize how many years it would take to even come close to trying to gather up two of everything on the planet? And then he stuck them on a wooden boat that he made in the backyard. <laughs> You couldn't get a fraction of them on the Queen Mary. It isn't going to happen. So when you look at it from the standpoint of practical approach, it missed, sorry, the boat. Anyway, 
what it did is, is it was trying to tell a story. And it was trying to share the idea that if you believe in something and if you feel in it strong enough in your heart, you can overcome all these obstacles. Well, that's fine. But don't sell it as given fact. I'm not saying that there couldn't have been a flood somewhere and someone built his own boat and God told him to do it because God talks to each and every one of us and he saved all the animals he could. That makes a lot of sense. But to say it was the whole world and every animal and it was because God was really upset, no, downright pissed at the people here. He was doing it to get evening because what was happening up there is we had a vengeful God, a jealous God, one that sat there and made sure that everything you did was according to the book or you're out. And they're teaching you that too because religion came along and how are they going to keep you in line? Remember that manipulation? Up comes the devil. How about hellfire and damnation? We'll throw that in too then you're going to spend the rest of eternity in hell burning because you didn't do what we told you to and we talked to God so this is the word. That's some pretty rough punishment. Come on guys. Eternity over not closing the, well, didn't matter. <laughs> the whole idea is is that they created a format. Now, a great huge number of the people. In fact, right now, I think Catholicism is the largest single, maybe not, but it's one of them anyways, 1.2 billion believers, or sort of believers, or kind of want to be believers, but they're there. Because I was raised Catholic too, and guess what? <laughs> I'm not over there anymore. So they probably threw me in the 1.2. And, and, and I, I don't want to pick on them because, just to pick on them, they did a lot of good, they've done a lot of bad. They did this and that, and they, they did it according to Hoyle, and a lot of the things that they did were kind of like business of the day, as usual. I mean, people run around killing each other all the time back then. In fact, it's really funny, I, every time I think about the Holy Land, because that's supposed to be where, you know, a lot of the cradle of civilization came from, that area, and, and all the different religions, the Jews and, and, and Muhammad and, and Christ were all there, and they called the Holy Land. If you ever look at it, they don't do anything but kill each other over there all the time. It's famine, it's this, it's something else like that. It's, just, it's the most god-awful place in the world. Why the hell they want to live there is beyond me. But they do. And it's the Holy Land. Because that's where it started. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's where it has to end. The circumstances you move forward and look at what you're, you're dealing with today, I'm going to bring it right up to the beliefs because I don't want to get too long here with what it is because i got a ways to go. The ideas that we're looking at and dealing with, uh, I love the way Alexander brings it out and says, you know, we got this crucial hundred years, but you know what, he's very right. We have a time, 2012 next year, hey, it's here, everybody's looking at, is it the end of the world? Well, technically it is. It's the end of the world as the way you knew it. Because there's change in the wind, there's change everywhere. And it's going to be a transformation. Now, that can be wonderful, or it can be kind of tough. It all depends on how you go through it. But the change is important. And that 100 years started right around 1950. The sense we're dealing with Christianity and we're here, let's take a look at those 1950s. Do you remember how civil rights, see, we're a country that was founded on freedom. We even went to war over it in our own backyard. But it wasn't until the 1950s that it really hit the table. Hey, how about the blood in the streets in Little Rock, Arkansas? Martin Luther King, women's lib, gay rights, all of the stuff that stemmed from the dissension in the ranks that had to come through and be pulled out. It wasn't released just to happen. It had to be drugged, kicking and screaming into this era, but it did and it started right then and there. Go back and look at the clock. Here it comes. Women's live hell. Years ago they couldn't even vote. They couldn't buy a house. They got, had to fight just to get equal pay. I mean, was that right or what? 
No, it wasn't. But you know what today? Some of the top executives in the world are women. There was almost one president a couple of years ago came that close to being the nominee. And about civil rights again, blacks, a black man is the president of the United States of America, the most powerful country in the world. And gays, heh. You can be in the army now, you can get married, and they got comedians making a huge amount of money just enjoying it. It's the whole set of situation where everything has changed so dramatically. It's leading right up to now. It's an idea where we're right on the edge and it's pushing past, but what it's doing is it's starting to shake the belief structure because there's so many people still in this little box over here that want to hear that Noah's Ark actually happened. You see it on TV, the search for the Ark. Well, okay, you found the boat, big deal. If it did happen, great, if it didn't, but it wasn't the event you tried to make it. How about Adam and Eve started the whole world? Probably not that one either. Okay, they're tough cells today. You see, religion and science have been like oil and vinegar since day one. Why? Because they're selling two different products. Religion says faith is how you believe and that's how you're saved. And science is from Missouri. It says, show me. I want to see how it works. And the problem is, is the overall structural religious belief system over here required that you believe what they say or it didn't work. So they and science were like butting heads and since they were very powerful, they had a pretty strong influence of suppressing all of it. Galileo, accused, convicted, and eh, sort of imprisoned in his own home for heresy. Why? Because he refused to believe that the earth wasn't the center of the universe. Now, what really seems out of touch is the Catholic Church finally absolved him of that. But it happened in 1992, only 400 years late. <laughs> you, you gotta see, there's, there's times when things move a little slower than they need to. Like my lecture. Okay, we're moving on. So, what I wanted to talk about or, or get close to today is you having to deal with what you know in your heart and the world around you and knowing what's going to happen and knowing that all this change is going to come. You're going to watch things collapse. No, no, wrong. You're not going <laughs> to You're not going to watch them. You are watching them. Look at the economy. Look at the circumstances in, in, in Europe. Look at the famine, the war, the this the going on everywhere. Governments are dropping like dominoes over the Middle East. And it's happening. And we haven't even got to the main event yet. Hey, it's, it's, it's coming. Now, it isn't, I'm not trying to be a doomsday. I'm trying to say, wow, what took it so long? And I say that because this. You can stand in the middle of absolute chaos and be in perfect harmony if you see and understand who and what you are. You can watch the whole world coming down around you and I can put the world at your feet. Why? Because all you really have to do is understand who and what you are in the world. How it works for you as an individual. Remember about your God self. Connect with that. Bring out that little piece of God in you and share that in the world. The second you do that, everything shifts and changes. You see things differently. You feel things differently. You understand them differently. The hellfire and damnation doesn't mean anything anymore because it doesn't even make sense, let alone anything else. What you've done is you've taken the responsibility for who you are as a person and gone back into who you are, brought it back out into the world and are sharing it in a way to make a statement as to who and what you are, what you truly are, the complete you. It doesn't matter. And the wonderful thing is, is the only person it changes is you. 
That's not totally true because everyone that you come in contact, feel, contact with feels that energy and it does influence them and it does help support the overall. But all it takes is you to make that change for it to happen. I should have said it that way. Back it up. Okay. But what we're looking at from that standpoint is, is the power lies right in you to change everything in the world out there. I can't change anything out there. And if I try, it's going to beat me up, trust me. I've uh, worked pretty hard at it and it kicked my ass. <laughs> it took whatever it did to get me to wake up and pay attention. All you really have to do is come back into who and what you are, identify with that peace, bring it out into the world, and you've made a statement and you're living your God self here and now. And at that point, the world is at your feet because everything you're doing now is an opportunity. Remember, you're not being pushed into doing this. You're doing it because you want to do it. You're doing it because it's where you feel you need to be. You're doing it in your heart because that's where you're going and that's where you want to go. The chaos around you doesn't matter. It's just change. Change happens all the time. The only constant in the universe is change. So accept it for what it is. Work with it. Make it your tool. Make it your ally. Why? Because in the midst of change becomes opportunity. Do you realize in Chinese the same word, chaos and opportunity, are exactly the same word? Wow. Why? because it's exactly the same word. That's why. It means the same thing. It just depends on which side of the line you're standing on. Do you want it to happen or are you worried about it? And it flows that direction accordingly. Okay, I'll wrap it up. <clears throat> Getting a little long here. The important thing for you to remember though is it's a singular event, but it can be shared. You're here is a group. All of you looking and wanting to share and bring out of that special little spark of who you are and share it with someone else and find someone of like mind and idea to share it with. And you know what? Wow, it's incredible. There has been so much struggle and fear in the world and, and people are going to hear what I say and think this guy's nuts. But the ones that want to hear it, the ones that need to hear it, the ones that are ready to hear it are going to hear it so strong, it's going to start bringing down walls. Why? Because it's time for them to come. And the only way that they were there is because somebody else put them there or you did. But it doesn't matter. All you have to do is use your understanding and they come down. Accept who and what you are. Bring it back out into the world and make it your gift to the world. I'll close with just two quick little sayings. They talk about the Holy Land as being some place where God was established and religion was brought into the world. I want to say if you find that little piece of God in you, the real Holy Land, <clears throat> Is anywhere you're standing. It's yours. You own that piece of it. Yeah. And you don't have to ask someone, how do you bring God into your heart? All you have to do is realize that he's already there. <laughs>